Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to bring the 9 game NBA main set on Monday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL uh, slates on DraftKings. Uh, before we get into the video, I want to thank you guys again for the continued support. Now closing in on 7.4 thousand subscribers. Um, the support recently has been um, really, really overwhelming. So thank you guys again. Seriously, I, I really do appreciate it. Um, if you guys do enjoy the content, if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't want to upload videos you don't want to go live, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, as always, I will be doing um, free live streams before the, the main site to kind of go every go over everything. Um, if you guys cannot watch these videos, I do upload an Apple podcast of a link down below. If you're interested in signing up for premium content and offer that on patreon.com, you guys can check out the different packages. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Also link down below. And finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring the show. If you guys are not familiar with Prize Picks, it's a site where you can bet on player props. All right, so you're betting over, under, and player projections here. They already have them up for tomorrow's slate. If you guys are interested, you can use the code DKDFS. It's DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You get 100% match up to $100. So if you put $100 in, you get $200 to play with. So basically, again, 100, 100 free uh, dollars. And yeah, it's kind of a fun way to, uh, it's a little different than drafting. Because obviously, you're not playing against anyone right you're playing against the house and uh these will update too so if you get them like early in the day and you see you see one where you think uh it's like a missed projection or whatever then obviously you can take it so um yeah but that's with that all out of the way let's jump in the video before we talk about players and their prices for this nine game slate let's take a look back at my lineup here from sunday so sunday we got the big news that luka Doncic was out so my advice was load up on the dallas mavs value and the value I went with the Hardaway, the value I went with was Hardaway, Richardson, Jalen Brunson, and Dorian Finney-Smith. And um, you know, it was just such a high usage guy out of the offense with uh, with Luka Doncic that the value was just too good. Now Hardaway, Richardson are doing okay, could be doing better. They're both like bricking every shot. They're shooting like twenty percent, so could have had a lot better days for them. I did really like Levine too. Now that you know Luca was out, but I couldn't get to him. You know, I, I had Steph. Basically, my advice was to play the Mavs value and go stars and scrub. So the stars I liked were the two Brooklyn guys and Kyrie and KD, Westbrook and Steph Curry, and then I liked Nurkic, Thomas Bryant in the mid range. So that was kind of the advice was go stars and scrubs. Now Kuzma was a guy I made a mistake there. I'll tell you guys one. Um, you know, if I got unlucky or if I made a mistake, that was a mistake. I, I did not feel good about it. You know, talk I talked to you guys about it in the Patreon live stream if you're in there, but. He's just very scoring dependent when he plays alongside LeBron and AD. It was just there weren't a lot of options there. I should have played Barton over him, really. Like that, I think that was definitely a mistake on my part. Um, Barton was in a much better matchup, and he's a guy that can do a little bit more than scoring. So made a mistake there about playing Kuzma. But yeah, Nurkic, Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Steph Curry to round it out. Steph Curry's having a really nice shooting day. Hopefully the Mavs, uh, the Mavs value is solid, but again, could be doing a little bit better, to be honest, if uh, Richardson and, and Hardaway could actually hit some shots. Uh, but that's that's it for the look back, guys. So hope you guys had a good night. Uh, we'll see how I, how I finish. Westbrook at the top shot like twenty percent, man. He was like seven of twenty six or something. Like, can you just hit a couple more shots? God, that was frustrating. Um, but yeah, actually avoided foul trouble, avoided injuries, avoided ejections. It's like the first slate in a long, long time. So I'm not complaining at all. Um, let's talk about this nine game slate though. So. Um, we have Hornets. We have 76ers. This is a 219 over under. The 76ers are nine and a half point favorites. We have Celtics. We have Raptors. This is a 215 over under. The Raptors are three point favorites. Knicks and Hawks are 222 over under. The Hawks are six point favorites. Thunder and Heat are 213 over under. The Heat are eight point favorites. Pacers and Pelicans is a 218 over under. The Pelicans are one point favorites. And Kings Warriors. This one looks appealing. 232 over under. Uh, the Kings are two and a half point favorites. Oh, also NFL went pretty solid for me. It could have been a massive day if that game would have went to overtime. Houston game. Tennessee gets like a 50 yard bomb and they, they make a field goal to to win it just like play prevent defense man god it could have been a huge day uh, for me in NFL but hope you guys had a good day in that as well um, all right let's go for this video we're going to go position by position um, so we'll start at center and at the top Giannis into to come about 10.8k has absolutely enormous upside in a matchup like this no one in Detroit can stay with them it's the same thing I always say about Giannis though like there is some blowout risk Detroit's not very good team so you got to weigh that in, but you know, below 11K, he's a guy that has 70 point upside, if seven fan, 70 fancy point upside in a matchup like this. So, really, really like Giannis if this game can stay competitive. 
Joel Embiid at, at 9-9 um, had a decent game. Thought he could do a little bit more for playing 37 minutes against that Charlotte front court, uh, but still like his upside below 10K. There is a little bit of blow risk in this one too, and Charlotte is a team that's been struggling recently. But um, again, Embiid does have a good amount of upside uh, at 9-9. Do really like Sabonis here at 9-5 in an up-tempo game here against the Pelicans. Now, he got a little bit unlucky uh, with, you know, only did miss out on like a couple of minutes for, for the foul shovel, uh, but shot only shot about eight times. And Malcolm Brogdon just couldn't miss. So he was deferring a little bit to Malcolm Brogdon, and he still put up 40 fancy points. So again, the floor is pretty high with Sabonis. Definitely not a must play at 9-5, but I think he's a safe play. Like, he has a pretty high floor because of the rebounds, the assists, the blocks, the steals. And when he's having a really good night, he can go for 50-plus. So um, I, I do like Sabonis at that price. And then... Don't even want to mention his name, but got benched for me last time I played him in a fantastic spot. So that means that this game, he is going to go off. It's literally been happening like every single time. Like Luka Doncic, I play him a couple, for a couple sites, lets me down. I finally fade him against Miami. He goes off. The Timberwolves tonight, I was like, man, the Nuggets are going to blow him out. They keep it close. Like you couldn't keep it close against Washington in a much easier spot. They keep it close, so a chalk Jokic goes off. I just know I can already see it. Drummond going for 60 plus. He literally is either he ruins your lineup or he absolutely smashes. There's no in between. So Drummond is a decent tournament play because he burned a ton of people and no one's going to play him. Um, can I do it on this slate? Probably not. But again, that means he's going to have an amazing day. Now, Julius Randall at 9K, I actually like. Price seems up there right but the Knicks are really shorthanded this is a good matchup against the Hawks and he's basically going to play about 40 minutes he's stuffing the stat sheet um even on a bad shooting night where he shot 5 of 16 he still put up 42 fancy points so I do like Randall a good amount here in this matchup um I think firmly in play in both formats Vucevic on the other side talked about him as the pivot off Drummond I just couldn't do it that other slate but man was that the move right Vucevic 50 plus fancy points at like 10% owned. Drummond was like 70% owned and, and just completely busted because he got benched. Um, I think Vucevic under 9K still is upside, right? He's a guy that he played 35 minutes at last game too. That's good to see. Like the minutes have been a little up and down from even in close games, but 34 and 35 in the last couple games that were close, that makes Vucevic a lot safer. If he's going to play about 35 minutes, he's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. Yeah, firmly in play at the top uh, there at center. The Miami guys, when everyone's healthier, kind of just stay away from me. Uh, Zion at 7-9, I think is a decent play. Is he a priority? No, nope. minutes should be there for him. I think I just like the upside a little bit more on Ingram. Now, Christian Woods at 7-4. I just think this is too cheap. I know, you know, he's not getting huge, huge minutes, but love the matchup for him, especially if Harden is out. We Harden is questionable and Luka Doncic are questionable. So those are two pieces of news that will completely change the slate. If Luka is out again, I want to go to the Mavs value. If James Harden is out, it's Wood. It's John Wall, who is just way underpriced again and then Eric Gordon would become a lot more viable if Harden is out so this game looks pretty appealing for for DFS wise I, I do like Christian Wood a lot especially especially if Harden is out other options here let's see I'm not really a Blake Griffin guy Miles Turner's is a secondary option you get you you, you know what I'm gonna say right Okay, if you don't know what I'm going to say, 30 minutes, 25 to 35 fancy points. The perfect cash game play. That is it. Clint Capella at 6-1 is, even though the price came up, I think is still underpriced. The reason, 30 and 31 minutes. So if he's going to play 30 minutes in this type of matchup against the Knicks, I like his upside. Even at 6-1, I think that's a little bit underpriced. He's going to run the pick and roll with Trey Young. Again, a good matchup. So... I do like a Palo decent amount here at this price. I think he still is a little underpriced. Other options here, I also really like Rashawn Holmes at 5'6". And the reason being the minutes, right? 32, 36, and 33 minutes. He's been doing a decent job of staying out of foul trouble. And I'm not super worried about him getting in foul trouble against Golden State. I mean, it can happen, right? It can. But... Like, they're not going to feed Wiseman a ton. So, um, I think Holmes is underpriced for his role in an up-tempo game. Got a 232.5 over under. This is a game that has a ton of upside. So, um, I do like Rashawn Holmes quite a bit there at that price. Don't mind Bagley, but I just prefer Holmes because the minutes right now. And Draymond is just getting too limited for me to consider him. Now, Chris Boucher, I like for GPPs. Still, the minutes, I'm still a little bit uneasy on his minutes. Like, 
Siakam got in some foul trouble the last game. If we go to, where is Siakam? How many minutes did he play? He only played 25 because he fouled out in, in that time. So, like, I'm pretty sure, like, Boucher definitely got extended a bit because of that. So, like, I still don't have a great feel on what his role is going to be. But that makes him the perfect GPP play. I told you guys that last late, if I knew Boucher was going to play over 25 minutes, I would lock him in. And what happened? He played 29 minutes, had almost 40 fancy points. He's a fantastic point per minute guy. It's just a matter of does he get the minutes. Now, he is playing really well, which I think boosts his case for higher floor of minutes. So I, I think Boucher is definitely viable. Still a little bit uneasy in his minutes, but if he does get extended, same thing I'll say. If I knew Chris Boucher was going to play 25 minutes tomorrow night, I would lock him in. That's how good of a point per minute guy he is, even against Boston. So really do like Boucher. More of a GPP play, though, because I'm still a little uneasy with those minutes. Bobby Portis at 4-9 has been crushing, right? He's a very, very high usage guy. Now, again, 26, 26, 26, and 25 minutes have all been in blowouts. So he's getting extended a bit because of the blowouts. In the two close games Milwaukee has had so far, 18 and 16. And again, this game has a good chance to blow out. So I feel like you, you approach this one of two ways. You play Giannis and hope the game stays close. Or I guess three ways. Play, play Giannis, hope the game stays close. Avoid it. Or hope for the blowout and, and play Bobby Portis. Because if he, if the game does blow out, he'll play mid-20s minutes. And he will smash. Um, again, a good point for a guy. So like him for GPPs. Boogie, I'm a huge Boogie fan. But the minutes, right? 14, 6, uh, and 11 minutes is not going to get it done. Maybe he plays more this game. But I don't know if I can do it. Now, JaVel McGee, again, he got extended because Drummond got benched. And McGee's a great point for a guy. So if you think Drummond is going to continue to get limited minutes, you want to look JaVel McGee's way. I'm not convinced about it, but again, that's that's the way that I would go about it. If I'm going to punt center, I think it's going to be Tristan Thompson. He's going to play mid to high 20s minutes, again, 27, 26, and 27. Not an amazing point for a guy, but he's a guy that can go out and get you like 10 points, 14 rebounds, something like that, right? So 4-4, four, four, I think if you need a punt center, it's probably Tristan Thompson for me. And then also the Dallas... You know, the Dallas guys here like Powell and, and, and Maxi Kleber would be a lot more viable if Luka Doncic is out. I will always mention, we still haven't really seen it yet, but the day when Mitchell Robinson picks up two quick fouls, Nerland Snowell is going to smash. He's going to break the slate. I'm just, just going to keep mentioning that because he's a good point printer guy. And whenever we do get the, the Mitchell Robinson foul trouble, he will have a really nice day. But that's it for center. So let's move on to power forward. So talk about Giannis and Sabonis and Randall. Tatum in a tougher spot, not a priority for me. But again, him and Brown, you know where the offense is coming from. They're both fine plays. Again, not uh, not guys that I'm really prioritizing, though. Again, probably would prefer Ingram to Zion. He's just a guy that I think has the higher ceiling at the moment. Um, against the Pacers, not really a must play, but um, 8-4 is still a viable price for him. We got to look at this Tobias Harris stat line. Can we go over this from last game? 24 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists. Three blocks and four steals. Excuse me for Tobias Harris, but I will always mention this. When I was on, when I was high on him in a great matchup against Washington. Thanks a lot, Tobias. Um, he is not going to have a stat line like that again. I will tell you that. Now, the matchup is really good against Charlotte, right? And if this game stays competitive, we're going to see mid-30s minutes from Tobias Harris. So not saying he's out of play. But he's not going to get six assists. He's not going to get four steals and three blocks again. And he did shoot the ball 9 of 14. So just pump the brakes a little bit with Tobias. I'm not saying he's out of play. I think what people might do is look at the box score and chase him. Again, don't think he's terrible. But if he's going to be over-owned, I will just perfectly, uh, I'm fine looking elsewhere. Other options uh, at power forward. So not a ton I like in this range. Now, Aaron Gordon did play almost 30 minutes. Um, I mentioned that, you know, if he was going to play close to 30 minutes at last slate, that he'd be a decent play. And someone said Aaron Gordon was the worst play ever. Well, 28 minutes, 33 fancy points. Don't think that was that bad of a play, was it? Um, yeah, he should get close to 30 minutes again. It's a good matchup. He's still not, he doesn't have the upside to go for like 35 minutes, which does limit him a bit. So, again, yeah, not a priority, but a lot more viable. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this guy. I know what's going to happen here. Harrison Barnes looks really good in an up-tempo game, revenge game narrative. I'm finally going to buy in, and he's going to bust. Just like Darius Garland, right? That last night, I told you guys, I was a skeptic. I was like, I don't think Darius Garland is this good. Well, I finally buy into him that last night when he's chalk in a great matchup, and he completely busts. So that's what's going to happen if I play Harrison Barnes. I will let you guys know if I do. If I do, you're going to want to avoid him. But 
No, seriously, he's been playing mid-30s Mets. He's been really consistent, and it's a good match for revenge game narrative. He's been doing decent rebounding the ball, too. Seven, six, eight, seven rebounds. So I don't know what's getting into Harrison Barnes, but I think he is viable on the slate for sure. Other options, yeah, don't mind Hunter. It's a good matchup. Uh, prefer him to Reddish. He's He's been more consistent. Um, so I think Hunter's a fine play. Dorian Finney-Smith at 4-4 um, would be a lot more viable if Luka Doncic is out against an up-tempo game. I think he's a decent play either way, but would be a little bit better um, if Luka is, in fact, out. And that's really it for power forward. So let's move on to small forward. Ben Simmons at the top at 9-1. Again, it's a good matchup. He did have over 50 fantasy points at last game. If you think this game is going to stay competitive, I would say probably try to look to get to one of those 76er stars, whether it be Embiid, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris. If the Hornets can keep it close, which they did the last game, based until the very end, these 76ers guys, at least one, will probably have a good game. Again, Brown, Tatum, they're fine plays, but secondary uh, because of the matchup. I don't play Miami guys when they're full strength. They're just too balanced of a team. So, yeah, I'm not going to Miami guys. There are guys I look to when like Jimmy's out or Bam's out or one of the guards are out. I just I just don't do it. Wiggins is at six six. You guys know how I feel about him. Uh, Terrence Ross, he shot the ball twenty one times last game. So I don't know what's going on here, but Evan Fournier is questionable. If he is out, I think Michael Carter Williams is a nice value who got filled in and did decent. Terrence Ross has been just shooting the ball a ton. Now, I will still mention he is very, very scoring dependent. So there's going to be the game where Terrence Ross finishes under with under 10 fancy points. Price is continuing to come up. I just, I don't like buying high end guys, right? This is like an all time high end Terrence Ross, almost 6K. It just, it's not a good feeling for me. So I'm probably not going to do it, but I'm not going to talk you off him if you want to. Just know the risk, right? He's been shooting the ball a ton and been shooting the ball pretty well. When he has the really bad shooting game, he has such a low floor. Um, Darius Baisley, again, I th- I'm a big fan of him. Matchup, not really the best, so more of a secondary play at that price. Eric Gordon, only, only would consider him if Harden is out. If Harden is in, I have no interest in Gordon. If Harden is out, I think Gordon's a nice play in the mid-range. Other options, again, Richardson and Hardaway. These are guys that will have to do a lot more if uh, Luka Doncic is out. If he is, in fact, out, I like them both. Even though, again, we'll see how the hell they finish, but they were shooting like 20% combined, both of them. Now, Michael Carter-Williams, he filled in, started for um, Evan Fournier. Shot the ball 2 of 11. So, he's not going to shoot the ball that bad again, most likely. Did get the 31 minutes, which is really good to see. So, if Fournier's out again, I think we can look to punt with MCW. Definitely not a must-play, but a, a guy you can throw into the mix of value. Got to monitor the status of some of those Knicks guards. If they're all out again, again, Bullock would be in play for minutes alone. 41, 38, and 33 minutes. I don't like playing this guy, but he's playing big minutes right now. It is a good matchup. Let's see. Is there anyone else I want to mention down here? So I will bring up Kent Bazemore. It's a revenge game narrative. He played 11 minutes in the first half and actually played really well. So if he's going to play about 20 minutes in a revenge game narrative in an up-tempo game, I think you could could look to punt with Bazemore. We'll see if Kerr goes back to him again this game, but he played pretty well, at least what I saw in the first shift tonight in the first half, and he played 11 minutes. So that's it for small forward. Let's move on to shooting guard. Uh, Harden, again, this changes the entire slate. If he is out, it's John Wall, it's Christian Wood, it's Eric Gordon for me. If Harden is in, I still like those other Rockets, but just not as much. So got to monitor this. Again, this is key. Harden himself at 11-1, I think would be a fine play, not a priority for me. I would still rather have John Wall for way cheaper. Let's see. The Toronto guards, I always like target. Even in bad matchups, it's just the minutes, right? These guys are going to play 35 to 40 minutes. Both Van Fleet and Lowry fill up a stat sheet. So I always feel safer targeting these guys. They're both in play again for me, those Toronto guards, even in a tougher spot. Now, Sexton at 7-2. Not a huge fan of playing Colin Sexton because he's scoring dependent for a point guard. But we have Darius Garland status up in the air. If Garland is out, that's a little bit more usage to go around. We will see what they do with the starting lineup. Um, you know, Do they move C.D. Osmond in the starting lineup? Do they move maybe a guy like Dotson in the starting lineup? We'll see. So maybe some value there if Garland is out. The Charlotte guys, I think Rogier had the big game. Yeah, Rogier had the big game last game. I just, I don't, just don't trust it. I just, I don't trust these guys. I think that the viable plays we'll get to are maybe a guy like LaMelo Ball um, or even really buy low on Devontae Graham because he's been shooting the ball just like 10% from the field, really. 
Oladipo, with no teacher warning, worn out for the season. Well, he shot the ball 3 of 16 that last game and still had 33 fancy points. This is an up-tempo game. It's a bonus for me. It's Oladipo. It's Brogdon. I think all three look like pretty solid plays here uh, for the Pacers. Let's see. Other options. Again, RJ Barrett's at 6-7. He's in play because of the Mets. A little score independent. Would definitely prefer getting up to Randall. We'll talk about Alf Payton, who I think is interesting, but still a little uneasy on his minutes. So Barrett, fine. Again, not a priority. Bledsoe and, and Lonzo Ball, they're just taking turns having big games. We finally saw like the massive game from Bledsoe, the massive upside game after he was like chalk a lot. I just, I don't know if I want to do it on this slate. Again, they're just taking turns. Too hard to predict whether it's going to be Bledsoe or Lonzo that kind of steps up, step up. So I'm just probably not going to avoid the situation. Now again, Hardaway Jr., I don't have I don't have uh, interest in him if Luka is in. If Luka is out, I want to load up on the Mavs value again. Other options here at uh, shooting guard. Mm. I think George Hill's fine. Did play a few more minutes the last game, played 28. Um, so I think he's an okay punt play. There's no Halliburton, so we'll talk about Corey Joseph for you know potential value there. Again, Trey Burke, Brunson, these guys become solid value plays. Would definitely prefer Brunson if, uh, in fact, uh, Luka Doncic is out. Yeah, a guy like, I mean, we can maybe punt with Dotson if uh, Garland is out and he starts, but a lower usage guy wouldn't be super, super excited about that one. Well, let's finish up with point guards. Again, we went over Harden and Luka, got to monitor their situations. So if Luka Doncic does play in his full go against Houston, I like him as a spend up. Um, if he is out, again, I think that you want to load up on the Mavs value. Now, Trey Young at 9-8 is definitely in play at the top. Good matchup here. Uh, more of a GPP play for me. Probably would prefer some other spend-ups. I do like Steph Curry quite a bit again. He's coming through for me tonight. It's just a fact of Golden State is not a talented team. So, like, all the usage, all the offense is running through Steph Curry. And when he gets hot behind the three-point line, he just has a ton of upside. So, I do like Steph quite a bit there at 9-3 in an up-tempo game. Don't mind Fox, too. I definitely think you can run, like, a game stack here. Fox also playing huge minutes. He's a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. Definitely like him as well. I think you could play both together if you want to. We want we talked about Old Depot and Sabonis. Brogdon, the price is coming up, but I still think he's a viable play. Not as good a play at 7-9, but those three Pacers are the guys I want to look to. John Wall is just, I don't know what this pricing is. I mean, what is DraftKings thinking putting him at 7.6K? The first game, even when Hard is in, I told you guys, he was way underpriced. And he was like 20% owned, one for 45 fancy points. He is He's underpriced either way. If Harden plays, I still really like John Wall. If Harden is out, there's just there's just no way I'm fading John Wall at 7-6. There's just no way. So, yeah, Wall looks like a great play either way. It would become a smash play if Harden is out. Drew Holiday, uh, he would probably be the other buck I would look to um, at the top. He's a guy that should play over 30 minutes in a competitive game. Where we saw 38 and 34 minutes in the competitive game so far. This is a good matchup. So if Detroit can keep it close, I think you could see a big game from Drew. Um, I think he's a decent play in the mid-range. Mentioned Lonzo and uh, and Eric Blood, so I just don't want to do it on this slate. One of them probably have a good game, but it's too hard to predict. Now, Alfred Payton's at 6-1. The minutes are all over the place with this guy. 29, then 36, then 23, then 34. If all those Knicks guards are out again, if Burks is out and everyone else is out, I think Alf probably pushes for 30 minutes. And again, I love playing Alf Payton because he's a guy who can stuff the stat sheet. But... There's still just a little uneasy feeling. Like he only played 23 minutes a game against Toronto. So like the minutes are not secure with him. Well, they are secure with Randall and Barrett, not necessarily secure with Peyton. But if you do get lucky and you play him and he pushes for 30 to 35 minutes, I think he can have a really nice day at that price. Again, we got to monitor Garland's uh, status. If he is out, could be potential value there for the Cavs. Let's see. Other options. Um, Jeff Teague is also questionable. If he misses, we could look to a guy like Peyton Pritchard for value, who, who got a few extra minutes. Again, Exum started, played 35 minutes and had 14 fancy points. If Garland is out and he starts again, again, a viable punt. Corey Joseph is in play because Halliburton is out. He played 28 minutes the last game. Also, he should have played more minutes. I don't know if you guys followed that, but he picked up three fouls in three minutes in the first half. So, I think the plan is Corey Joseph probably pushes for over 30 minutes. I think he's a decent value. Also, again, Pritchard, if Jeff Teague is out, I think you could look to punt with him. And then it's the value Dallas guards, like Burke and Brunson. If uh, Luka Doncic is out, obviously would prefer Brunson, but I think you could play both if you want to. 
And that's about it for me for the uh, player by player breakdown. I think that's going to do it for the video as well, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos you don't want to go live. Uh, but yeah, thanks again, guys. I hope you guys all have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow in the live stream.